What is up guys? This is episode number five of Ride the Pine. Today we're going to be talking about the lessons we can learn from this coronavirus going forward. Let's jump right into it. First, I'm going to be talking about health. And I posted this on my Facebook a few days back. Um, During this quarantine, I've realized that most people are be giving more time than they know what to do with which would mean that they would be able to accomplish things that they haven't been able to take care of, such as their health. But in today's society, the health, the healthy get healthier while the unhealthy stay the same or get less healthy than they already were. Not because of the ample amount of time we were given. People have always had time. It's due to the lack of discipline within themselves. This is huge. Health is such a big component of who we are and how we function. And not a lot of people take enough, you know, you know, they don't invest in themselves. I was talking about that the other day, and it's true. You have to invest in yourself. If you don't want to be sick, you don't want to be ill, you don't want these viruses to affect you so bad, you need to be healthy. Um, the healthcare crisis right now, and this, is a shock, this was a shocker to me, is caused by smokers, elders, and ob- obesity slash diabetes. Now you look at the people who are leading in the COVID-19 cases. Elders, smokers, and people with diabetes. That is crazy to me. that They, they both coincide with each other. Um, but we just need to be healthier as a society. And each one of us can do our part in being healthier. And... An easiest way to do this and to boost our immune system to fight viruses like this is just to eat better. Um, it's the number one way to boost your immune system. It's just by feeding your body the right things. And I'm not going to sit here and say I eat the best and I eat 12 apples a day because I don't. Um, but I challenge myself each day just to eat a little bit healthier than I did the day before. And I know if one day I eat terrible... I can't eat terrible the next day. You know, I pace myself. You know, we, like, if you eat 12 burgers in one day, let's just say, and I know that's a crazy number, but let's just say 12 burgers. You can't expect your body, who's been eating 12 burgers in one, in, let's just say in one year, to one day magically just eat two. People have to pace themselves. It takes time to become healthy. It takes time to, you know, fix your diet. I think so many people and why diets don't work in today's society is that they try to go from 12 burgers to zero burgers in one day, even though their body's been used to the 12 burgers for a year and a half. It doesn't work that way. You, instead of eating 12, try to eat 10. And then after a few weeks of that, eat eight, you know, just keep gradually going down. But most people, they just try to go from what their body's used to, to super healthy and clean in a day. And that's why everyone fails at diets and, you know, these workouts and everything to get yourself healthy. And then the second way to boost your immune system is just getting enough sleep. Not a people, not a lot of people understand this and take pride in this, but everyone should be getting seven to nine hours of sleep every night. And with all the technology, we're given phones, you know, computer screens, tablets, TVs, that blue light that we're being, you know, shown through these screens is actually hurting our mental state, especially when we sleep. Not enough people are getting to the deep sleep. Some people never get to their deep sleep. And sleep is a huge way, like, your mental, the way you think can change. Helps your mind process things, make good decisions, and analyze situations. If you can't do those three things in a day, how are you going to expect yourself to do the right thing? You know, think correctly. You can't. We all just need to be at our peak. You know, the more we as a society grow and get healthier, the more these viruses won't affect us as bad. The flu, the cold, you know, just those different things won't affect us as much as they were in the past. Now I'm going to be moving into income. And this I talked about this a, you know, a few days back about having a side hustle. And everyone does need to have a backup. You know, everyone needs to have two incomes per person. And 
with all this uncertainty we have in today's society, not just talking about the COVID-19, what if people were to lose their jobs in you know, these small businesses? They're expecting 25% of all small businesses to be done, closed down. Now, think about all the people that work in those. They are jobless. And it's not like they can just go get a job right away. It takes time for that to happen. The people who are able to get through times like this, they made sacrifices when the times were good. They created an emergency fund. They had two sources of income. They prepared for the worst. Sacrifices are key. You have to sacrifice things to make sure you have, you know, that emergency fund. You know, instead of buying that new pair of shoes, keep the old pair of shoes that you can get another year out of. Invest that money into something that will either make you money or put it into a fund so you have money for times like this. Or, you know, if you were to lose your job, you have enough money to get through for some time. That's huge. And then moving into my last topic, taking out of China. Um, I'm going to read you guys a few facts. In 2008, $560 billion worth of goods came to, into the United States from China. That is 21% of all goods imported into the United States. 21% invested in just China is huge. A lot of people look at 21%, oh, that's not a lot. That is ginormous in comparison to every other country. And then 80% of all active pharmaceutical ingredients APIs used to make drugs in the United States are made in China. That is investing $300 billion in just pharma pharmaceutical ingredients. And then 97% of all antibiotics used in the United States were made in China. Now think about that. What if they were to poison just 20% of those? Think about how many people how many people that would kill. And they have the power to do that, do that because they hold so much power in everything that we have, especially in the medical force. That is just crazy to me. And they, you know, as most of you guys already know, they did come out and say that it was made in a lab. They didn't allow us time. They didn't tell us about it. And then they stocked up on equipment such as gloves, masks, and whatnot. That's super shady. And then, but it doesn't, like, in 2008, the contamination of raw ingredients imported from China and used to make heparin, a blood thinning drug, was associated with at least 81 deaths in the United States. We see this time and time and again. Like, they have done things to our medicine before. This isn't new. So what makes you think that they won't do this in the future? They are shady. They don't care. They don't care about their people. Why do you think they care about us? They don't. They're all for themselves. Um, we have to start bringing jobs back home. We can't have 97% of all antibiotics made in China. Can't have 80% of all pharmaceutical ingredients made in China. We can't have 21% of our imports made in China. It's ridiculous. When time and time again they have shown us that they are unreliable. They don't tell us the truth. They withhold information. Um, but with that being said, we if we bring jobs, that allows more jobs to come to the United States. Now, with that being said, people have to be okay with taking those jobs. Um, not making a whole bunch of money. But, you know, for the people that are, you know, not making any money um, and just kind of sitting and moping, any money is good money at that point. You know, even if you make only $10 an hour, $10 an hour is better than $0 an hour if I checked. People have to be okay with working. You know, we can't have a huge amount of our society, even before the coronavirus, unemployment rates were going down, but they still were not great. We have to get people working, especially now after we're probably going to go into a recession or even a depression. But that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I should have a video for you guys tomorrow. Make sure you like and subscribe. And then comment in the comments below if you guys wanted to hear anything or have any feedback from me that is all appreciated. And I should be back with you guys tomorrow.
Thank you.